Good morning, neighbors. <laughs> um, I didn't have a super well-organized set of things to do today, so I was just trying to pick up some other things I was in the middle of uh, from, from yesterday and last week. And one of the things I wanted to do was um, figure out effectively CPU, well, NUMA pinning on uh, for my KVM instance. Because I wanted, I think my um, my benchmarks for looking at the sec comp constant action bitmaps looked unstable, uh, and when I watched stuff in uh, in top, uh, it was all over the place. Like I would see, I would see migration between CPUs, um, even though they're like the KVM threads. There wasn't the strong enough CPU affinity that I was sort of thought would be happening already. Uh, but I think the problem is that normally uh, in a bunch of the other VMs I use, I use libvirt, our vert manager and everything else, and that does quite a bit of additional work. Whereas for the kernel testing I do, I'm usually tweaking all kinds of weird things on the QMU command line, so I just run it natively. But as a result, like if you, I don't even know I've got something booted. Do I have anything booted? I don't. Let's just boot this. Um, but I've got this if I look at my x86 launch script I'm basically saying please launch this with uh, where are my CPUs CPU host, SMP so I specify like it should be effectively it should pretend to be a single NUMA uh, thing you know, one true thread per core with one socket, so it's all together in one in one place. Um, since that's probably the easiest for the system to reason about, but it's backed on my actual host very differently. Like if you do, it's just new no numostat hardware 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 yeah mm, no numa numa control hardware. No, dash dash driver. Somewhere in here, there's what I want. There we go. Um, this is talk, talking about, you can get the same information out of LS CPU, except not too far. Um, you see your, the total number of threads that exist, but the breakdown about how they, how they exist uh, or where they are is like, this is the hyper threads per core. So there's this is a hyper threading uh, server um, and it has 18 cores per socket and two sockets so what does that look like that looks like is usually for this the NUMA nodes which are the, the physical arrangement of CPU and memory attachments um, there's effectively two NUMA nodes hello uh, and anyway so looking at um, looking at how those are laid out you can see sort of the distance between between nodes. Um, and while it's not super obvious, I spend a little bit of time and it appears as though the first set of CPUs listed in a given node are the are one side of a hyperthreading pair. Uh, and then the second set, which is disjoint in number, is the other half. So for example, uh, threads 16 and or like threads 17 is on the same core as uh, 53. Like they're, you know, zero maps to the first one of the next set. Anyway, so my plan was to shove two uh, cores to get me four threads into one like CPU set for KVM to run in. So it would never leave those CPUs. And similarly, to attach memory from uh, from that NUMA node uh, to that as as the exclusive um, exclusive piece, uh, and I was digging around trying to find details on the best way to do this because you can do it through C groups, you can do it through uh, a bunch of other stuff. Um, I found uh, let's see, I paste in chat, but it's on the it's on the Twitch about. Um, I found this relatively recent write up on sort of NUMA, what it is, how to examine it, and then ways to do that pinning. And it talks quite a bit about um, 
about libvert, uh, since libvert does a bunch of this uh, as far as placements. Um, the problem was I wanted to do this by hand uh, as opposed to through through libvert. Um, now you can do um, pinning in Docker with dash dash CPU set, uh, but I want to do this in KVM, and it seems like KVM doesn't appear to have native affinity, uh, which I found disappointing. But um, the point was I wanted to show... Um, actually, is this one doing... So if we look at like the the HTOP output here, you can see as it's spinning up, it's on a couple CPUs. It's on the, like you'll see the four that it appears to be stuck on at the moment. Um, let me get up that window again. All right, so it seems, and you already saw it jump, like it left one, but like 21 and 57 and then 24 and 58, and it sort of moves around and now here we've got them 25 2 58 and 1 and you can see those are sort of pegging that that the build I'm running in the KVM since the 4 CPU instance um, you can see that it just sometimes moves around on the CPUs and I didn't want that uh, especially given that for example if you looked at the NUMA layout oops, um, like these, of course, these numbers are off by one. HTOP says CPU 1, but that, I think, maps to CPU 0 here. So, like, it's running on 0 and 1, which is in NUMA node 0, and on 58, which is in NUMA node, the other NUMA node, and 25. So, something is happening where they're at least crossing a NUMA boundary for memory. Uh, and I think we can do... Uh, we can get... QMU, PID, I think it's NUMA, I think it's NUMA control. Is it to get a process? No, NUMA stat. NUMA stat. I think, can I do this? No, uh, hold up. NUMA stat of that PID. So you can see like QMU is running across two NUMA nodes and it's got memory allocated across NUMA nodes. So like it's doing, I'm gonna have relatively unreliable statistics uh, for at least benchmarking if I'm trying to do reasonably sensible statistics. And I'd rather not just boot my system <laughs> with most of the CPUs turned off to do this. Um, so uh, I started some t spent some time looking at um, creating the control groups that I could toss um, I could toss Docker or is it not Docker uh, toss QMU into. Uh, on the other hand, I can also use Numa Control itself to do this work. Uh, if we look at Numa Control, we can specify um, which which memory to bind, which nodes to bind to, um, and I think the CPU, physical CPU IDs that we could bind to and then process to, to go. Hello in chat. Um, so anyway, that's what I wanted to play with and see if that actually did what I wanted it to do. Um, so I believe if I construct this command line, out. I want the dash C with a CPU list, um, and then the dash M to bind memory to a specific node. And if I were to give it, uh, what was it, new stat hardware? Nope. No control hardware. Yeah, test set on steroids. <laughs> exactly. And I wanted, I, but I, I figured I wanted that level of granularity because I don't want the memory shared between nodes because of the, you know these the distances here. I don't want, I don't want things to be needlessly slow. I mean, that's it would be repeatable, but I want to be able to control it so that every time it's coming out of the same place. Uh, so anyway, I think 
but what I want is something like Numa Control dash C, and I'd give it the CPUs I wanted it on. For example, uh, 16, 17, 52, sorry, 52, 53. Why can't I type? And then specify I want the memory out of node zero as well. So that would be four CPUs uh, out of, and all memory would come out of there. Um, and then in looking at, uh, so we'll start, I think that's the base, but um, perhaps I have to do system, system. Uh, the other piece was, I think I wanted to pre-allocate, there's some way to do, pre-allocate the memory that, um, that QMU is going to use and sort of, sort of, instead of using it, oh, hey, look, I can suggest NUMAs to QMU. I couldn't find this before. Ha uh ha. -huh. Oh no, sorry, this is, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I was tricked by this again yesterday, but yes, Joey is watching is also correct. This is describing the NUMA arrangement inside and I don't want to do that. Anyway, looking back for allocation, there is some way to force the allocation. Um, mem pre-allocate. Oh, when using mempath from a temporarily created file and path. No, that's not what I want. Okay, never mind. Um, I don't want that. Anyway, so we'll add this Numa control line to. Um, launcher. Okay, let's stop this and you know, stop all of it. Thank you. And go back to the script. So what I really want here is hello, new person in chat. Welcome. Um, This work the balance here. Numa control, and then the command. All right, so that should, that should get us what we want. 16, 17, 52, 53, and 0. Um, now, one of the questions I had that I was not able to find an answer to is is there overhead in the QMU uh, system? binary like does the or do I need like five CPUs with a little bit left over um, and how do I pin affinity within like how do I map the virtual CPUs in QMU to the CPUs I have available um, uh, hello uh, more people uh, I'm in the in the uh, in the about on, on Twitch uh, I've been talking about or I listed a couple of things I'd be working on right now I'm looking at using NUMA control, which is how you bind CPUs and specific memory ranges to, to processes. I want to bind these to my VM, to KVM, uh, so I can get good performance benchmarks, or at least reliable performance benchmarks. Um, let's see what happens. Oh, right, sorry. Put the second tree. Mm, you can't see. Hold on, I have this. Okay, so um, I saw the burst on, on HTOP, which was good. But let's come back to the bench, the benchmarking. So they were about, yeah, so we can see the, the bursts there. Um, Chris Downs presentation. I have not watched Chris Downs presentation. Um, so I can see 17, 18, 53, 54, and I believe that would be, um, there should be the right CPUs, right? Because HTOP is numbering wrong. Ah, good, yeah, the C groups. Um, that's what I wanted to look at is also did 
Um, so one way you can do that is in the CPU CPU set C group. Um, yeah, I think I uh, I didn't watch the presentation, but I think I looked through those slides. Um, so one thing you can do is use CPU set, and you can specify. Uh, I think it's. I'm pretty sure it was CPUs. Sorry, and then I'm exclusive. I found that noted as, so you could actually build up a CPU set and toss processes into it. Um, but since I'm sort of operating from a launcher perspective, I wanted to look and see if I could just use NUMA control directly. And so far, so good. Um, but, uh, so if we're looking at HTOP, it's still, it's pinned, they haven't moved. I like that. And, um, uh, where were we? Yes. Uh, I want to see what the memory layout looks like for this as well. I noticed this the other time too. So most of it now is in node zero. There's this tiny bit in node one, and I saw this last night and I could not figure it out. I saw some issues about there might be bugs in how Numistat works, but when I actually figured out where Numistat was getting its details from, if we actually go and look at um, here, there's some, I think it's the Numa map. Numa maps, yeah. Uh, someone asked what the name of the font in this terminal was the other day, and someone had a great answer for how I should find it, and it's just the standard font uh, under Debian, Debian's fixed. Uh, let me see if I can get this FC match. So what I learned was I could do FC match monospace. Apparently, the answer is Deja Vu Sans Mono. Um, so if I grep for the way the nodes are specified in here, N equals, or N something equals. Um, and if I look for N0, most of it is there. And if I say N1, I get um, kind of a large number of things, which don't entirely understand why those things got mapped, right? These are like the shared libraries that QMU loaded as part of this. Uh, so my best guess is that these are already mapped in memory, so it can't control where they came from. Like other things, <clears throat> which isn't surprising, like lib GNU TLS, um, may already have been mapped in memory by some other process, but the Spice server seems really, really specific to QMU. That's like the background, uh, like the, the, the VNC-ish thing, I believe. So I'm not real clear on that, but at least from my perspective, that's relatively okay because it means all the rest of the memory is probably um, libhogweed, yeah. Um, I, uh, the rest of the memory should be dedicated to the actual guest. So for me, this seems to be doing the right thing. Um, what I'd hope to see is um, reliable, or, oops, um, reliable benchmarking. Now, if we've pinned the CPUs, we've pinned the node, and what I'd really like to do and why I think I have to move and move all of this to C groups is that this doesn't exclude those four CPUs from everything else on the running system, which is what I'd really like. So my, in theory, uh, I could run a, you know, a fully parallel build at the same time and it wouldn't disrupt KVM. Right now, I'm pretty sure it'll attempt to schedule time on those CPUs as well. Um, and I found some details on you effectively creating another CPU set C group and moving all the rest of the system into it and leaving those CPUs out. Um, anyway, I might I might try that now, but uh, that seems uh, that seems a bit a bit intense. Uh, but I wanted to find and get those details again. Uh, let me see. 
quickly if I can find the bit I was looking at. Because I thought it was pretty, pretty wild to haul that stuff around. Because you could actually just use, you could exclude the C group completely. So far, I don't see it here. So this one is the post I found. Let me just make sure I have that correctly. I found this post on basically providing that kind of isolation where I'm gonna make a CPU set, move CPUs into it, and then remove everything else, um, which I thought was pretty cool. So if I revert, well, we'll keep this around just for reference for myself. Um, but let's just bring this back to like the normal script and let's shut this down. Stop, 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 stop building. And let's walk through this one for this, the actually doing CPU isolation. Bad cert on that site. Hmm. Doesn't look bad to me. Certificate valid. Uh, perhaps you, it seems unlikely you don't have Let's Encrypt in the browser. Oh, that is interesting. Um, I am probably looking at a cached version of this in my browser since I was just going back through tabs. But yes, expires on Monday, October 12th at 9 p.m., which was yesterday. <laughs> Oops. Uh, yeah, that's, that's not great. Um, hmm. Well, hopefully they will do their, their correct thing. Uh, well, I hope they can still get to it and read it. Um, let's see if they have Lose it. Let's see. V. Do they have it on HTTP? No. So they do have forwarding to HTTPS. Oops. Oops. Anyway, that's where I saw it documented. But let's let's. Uh, I'm going to give it a run anyway. So the the top of this website talks about actually booting with isolation uh, on, and that was rather too much for me. Um, then there's uh, C, uh, C set shield. Um, which I thought was also kind of cool, uh, but didn't get me web archive. We don't, we could toss an exception in too. That works too. Thanks. Um, so C set, um, <laughs> so for example, so the examples they gave on like setting Process doesn't exist anymore. So you could do C set shield, uh, which was a way to move stuff over there, and you could use use that as the launcher. Um, but it wasn't clear to me how I would get NUMA control over that as well. Um, so I wanted to take a quick look at C set to see what it was. Do nothing. Do I have it? Of course I don't. CPU set. Do do. Exciting parts of the stream. All right, back to C set. Um, okay, shielded CPUs. Oh, it's 
in a separate home page entirely. So this just tells me what happens there. In fact, this one gets into enough control that it says you can make sure uh, kernel threads don't even run there, um, which seems pretty great. Um, let's see. Yeah, Shield from unbound interrupt threads. I am curious how this accomplishes its work, because I don't think it uses C groups either. Um, I think it just might be part of CPU set. Um, and it might be part of the earlier sys uh, syscalls for doing these kinds of things. But as you can see, it is not something I've done a lot with. Okay, so let's see. This also I don't think has any, yeah, this has no knowledge of NUMA. I don't think it has any knowledge of memory. So I wonder if, can I do a NUMA control to get the memory in place? Like if I did uh, NUMA control dash M0 and then did a C set shield dash C, let's see, where were we? So this is my standard one. That's the NUMA control one. Now we could do, I want my NUMA control, but M0, and then C set of shield, if I can spell with those CPUs. And then, oops, I have no key on there anymore. <laughs> okay, let's look at C set again. Command. All right, so C set shield. I it's not dash dash. I need to say dash dash exec. Which is an interesting, interesting way to do that. Normally launchers will just say dash dash to end the options from that one and move on. Let's see exec. Oh, interesting, though I see in the example from from the website that actually the options follow. So it actually looks really weird and looks like this. So I'd say zec qmu and then dash dash to separate and then the rest of the options that go to the exec. Very weird. I don't know why it's arranged that way. But in theory, that would put me in there. Uh, let's try it and let's see if I can. Um, uh, let's. Oh. What? Huh. Is this. This is very broken. Can I actually look at what C set is doing then? I assume this is a binary. Also, why wouldn't it have future? I was not expecting the basic tools to be broken. Hmm. Um, sure. Future does not exist. Too bad. Um, yeah, so uh, another, another recap for joining. Um, I am working through getting CPU pinning and CPU isolation for a VM running in KVM um, that is also sort of NUMA node aware, so I'm not crossing NUMA node boundaries for memory and CPU uh, for the KVM instance. I'm looking at NUMA control, and now I'm looking at uh, CSET, which uh, was going to do shielded stuff. So it's just a typo in their package. Like that's kind of intense. Um, but okay, sure. Oops. Huh. Ah. <laughs> How does this run? How did it run for anybody? Okay, maybe 
Starting over now. Yeah, I think something else is going on here. in fact future but that's no but that's that's python's future support no, there is futurist bye bye okay well let's i mean i expect that this is already installed it is not futurize i that doesn't seem like what i would want Future. Yeah, but did it actually include the stuff named future? It, yeah, it really does. Oops. Yep, okay. Missing a dependency. Uh, hold on. Adding to the random junk discovered while doing a stream. Uh, CSET package and. I think it's 2004, yeah. And focal missing Python 3 future dependency. Okay, well, I'll file a bug. Or maybe the bug already exists. Who knows? Uh, we're off in the weeds now. Where are we? I think I wanted to be here. Okay, CSET, yes, yes. Uh, I wanted to try and launch this again. What will happen? Everything blows up. Do other CPU sets exist? Let's go take a look. Specify individual threads. Move all kernel threads off of the shield. And then exec. Oh, I can't actually have to construct it ahead of time. Hold on a second. I can't read. OK. Threads, shield. Yeah, I think it's doing. This might actually be doing C groups or something. Uh, let's see what happens. 16, 17, 52, and 53. Uh, and then this is set. Oops. Shield, kill thread. I think I want. No. Move all movable kernel threads off of the shield. So K thread on. Why is it off versus on? And then in my NUMA control, I can do a shield exec. Sounds like I can't set it up and exec it in the same. Uh, oh, thank you. Got it. And then reset. So I should be able to catch this in my try. Shield reset. Okay, so that'll undo the shielding. Still a typo? Man. Oh, ha. I really butchered that one. Thank you. Okay, there was the four places I expect it to be. I apparently have spelled them all correctly. This is what you get for watching live demos, effectively. Uh, okay, magic now, work tree, sec comp build, let's see what happens. Uh, do other CPU sets exist? Fascinating. Okay, so let's just do this one by one, shall we? If we do a C set, well, first let's look for the set. Uh, C set FS. C set commands. What do I need? Task set. Do I need anything else mounted? 
Okay. Let's just start with something simple. So it doesn't just like doesn't like that at all. Any other CPU sets exist? Ah, okay. So yes, this is behind the scenes using C group uh, to do this. And yes, the answer is Docker when it installs does in fact have its own CPU set C groups because you can do that if you look. Here, you can see that Docker has created its own uh, CPU set. Um, interestingly, I see that it is doing this without a name here, which makes me think I'm missing an argument somewhere to name this. The shield threads. Nope. Oh, sys set user set. Hmm, why? Uh, yeah, so that's interesting. I might end up having to do this entirely manually, but it was really nice to have C set do it for me. And let me see, look down here, more examples. Streams back. Um, maybe, maybe. Okay. So yeah, so I see it. Um, it definitely looked into the CPU set and it saw that Docker was there and then complained about it. Uh, so, so let's um, let's just see. What happens if I remove that? Docker does not clean up its CPU set. And it's not running. Let me try C set this way. No, it still didn't like me, so let's remove CG delete dash R CPU set Docker. Pow. And it should be gone now. So it's gone now. Now can I set up a shield? Yes. System soup. Yeah, so this is doing what I didn't want to do manually, which was it has to basically build a, it has one CPU set that are just the CPU spec I've, I've asked for. And then it makes a second one for everything else and removes those CPUs from it. <clears throat> and in the process, it has to move all of the other tasks <laughs> out, of the root, uh, out of the root CPU set. So I think my task here is to figure out how to get this to coexist with Docker. Um, or, frankly, any other CPU sets. Uh, but if I do a reset. I think it will move everybody back. Yes, well, I've not destroyed my system in this process. That's very nice. Um, what was the other note I was going to make? Um, yeah, user and system. Okay, so since CPU set C group supports the NUMA nodes, I would actually expect C set to be able to learn about how to set the NUMA nodes on this as well, but uh, it doesn't seem to. So, fine. We can do that separately, maybe. Let's go back to the image. Uh, this should, again, hopefully work. Right, that's, that's sort of one of the things I'm wondering about is why can't just, um, so here, the question is CPU set, uh, CPU 
set.cpus. Like that has all of them listed. Why can't we remove from there? And I suspect it is what you think, which is that it's a it's a tree. Like we can't we can't change this top level, but we can specify below it. Um, uh, what do I use the system for? Building software. <laughs> So uh, the, the all mod config or all yes configs on building the kernel is the sort of the canonical way to do build tests for, you know, before sending stuff to Linus and he yells at you if it doesn't build. Um, and that is kind of a lot of code to build. Uh, so an all mod config on this system takes about five minutes, which is nice. Um, but ostensibly I could also build all of like AOSP, all of Android's uh, code relatively quickly too, since that's sort of a build from scratch. Uh, similarly, Chrome OS, building a Chrome OS image, or, uh, that's e-build, like what Gen 2 uses. Um, so you end up building everything, almost. Um, so it's it's a beefy, beefy system. I'm lucky to have it. All right, so let's come back to this. I think maybe we're ready now. Something happened. That's nice. Oh man, I don't know, an hour, 45 minutes? Really depends. Well, yeah, def config. <laughs> def config is good. Def config is real fast. Uh, here, okay, so let's look at. All right, where are we? PS4 QMU. Uh, let's look at. Numa stat of nope, I'm not allowed. Sorry. Well, first of all, let's look at the CPU sets. So yes, we've got system and user. If we look at system CPU set dot CPUs, we should see a hole, which we do. Um, and if we see user here, we see just the ones we specified. Uh, so that's. That is nice, that's what we're after. And we've got the same thing here with the nodes. So the bulk of it is in node zero, um, in megabytes. See, this is the weird one. Um, someone in chat asked about um, finding the, the mem prealloc. And that appears to be only so if I look at QMU system x 64 and prealloc appears to only be for when I've got guest RAM backed from a disk file, which is weird. Um, the dash M is about what it admits to, but I don't see how a way to get QMU to fully allocate it, um, like in one hit. The guest startup RAM size of one gigabyte creates three slots, hot plug additional memory. Yeah, so that's like, I don't think I need a max mem, right? Um, I'll look at, uh, Look at this again because I do set up my memory very weird because of me trying to use NV, uh, NV dim or yeah NV dim stuff with P store and some other things that I did. So I set my max size here dash M. Oh, maybe that's the problem. My max mem is higher than my RAM size, uh, but that's because I'm using the NV dim stuff to sort of make a gap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this, like, what I did for this is I basically have just this NB dim, but it doesn't get used for the actual system memory. But anyway, okay, fine. But at least we'll allocate it once if we do a build, which is what I've got my benchmark set to do. Um, keyboard, it is, <laughs> it is a, uh, the, like, the older Microsoft ergonomic or whatever. <laughs> I, I would like no one to be able to hear it at all because it seems to, Type, uh, type over me, but I don't have a particularly good mic. Um, 
Anyway, okay, this is running. Let's go log in again. Uh, let me go bring up my HTOP so I can see it big instead of staring in my screen. Okay, so I'm expecting this to be on what a 16 or on HTOP 17, 18, 53, 54. But we're off by one. Hey, can I get HTOP to start numbering from zero? Spacing now it doesn't look like let's see age top numbers <laughs> CPUs from zero count CPUs from zero it will be in the next release of H top circa twenty eleven RN noise. Oh, interesting. I don't know if I've got that. But yes, I use OBS. Um, let's go look at filters. I don't see anything. I see compressor, expander, gain, invert polarity, limiter, noise, gate, noise suppression. Or noise, it's under noise suppression. All right. Suppression level, and an option for RN noise. I don't have an option for that. I just have suppression level. So, hmm. all right, let me remove this one so we don't break anything. What version am I using? I'm using, yeah, 2508. So I will look at upgrading OBS. Oh, it was better already? Oh, hold up. Let me put it back. Yeah, the hiss is something I haven't been able to figure out. Let's try adding it back just for fun. <laughs> Let's do live, live changes. Okay, so that's active. I'll top for a second. Oh yeah, that I can even see that on the mixer. Cool. Yay! <laughs> Display options. All right, let's go look at HTOP. This is great. See, you're all helping me. Will I pass through functions? Nope. Such, uh, for column order. Eh, I'm not gonna send, oh wait, setup? Setup? No, not sure anything. Okay, I can add Y1, that's not a big deal. Okay, back to here. I think this is the, yes, this is the VM. Let's go look at the benchmark. So yeah, so the benchmark, um, it's really dumb, but uh, it'll effectively just do a build first and then start benchmarking a whole, like just over and over. So in theory, all memory will have been allocated and VFS will be in the same state, or the VFS cache will be in the same state or order, at least. It's still a noisy benchmark, but I wanted to see if it could be improved at all. All right, so let's look at HTOP again. I would expect, yep, 17 and 18. So the CPU sets are working. And uh, the main thing I want to do is if I come out of here uh, and I try to do a task set, can I force myself uh, to run on one of these CPUs. So like uh, task set dash C16, will it let me? And it won't. Neat. But I can move. So they really are isolated. That's, that's pretty great. All right, so uh, those two are running at full blast now on the build, and it looks like other things can't be scheduled onto them. So I'm um, probably the benchmark I should do is does this actually make my benchmarks better? <laughs> Just do a regular benchmark. 
but in the meantime, I kind of like that. Um, it's a little bit, it's a little bit goofy to haul all of my process IDs or back and forth. But if I'm not running QNU, there's no reason to leave those CPUs out. Uh, so that's fine. It'd be nice if CSET would do the memory controls as well. Uh, maybe some later version does. I'm not sure. But um, that's that's pretty cool. So that's uh, that's what I wanted to get to. So that benchmark is running. Uh, I can do whatever I want over here, and if I look at the CPU sets that were set up, I can see, um, let's see, CPU set dot prox. And mm, no, C group, no, CPU set, sorry. C group prox. There we go. And that's just probably, that's the sudo in the other one. Uh, do I see? Tasks, yes, okay, there's the full task list of all the threads that are running. And I have no idea what QM is doing with itself with all those threads. Um, so uh, it would be interesting to compare this effect to what libvirt does. Um, but this is sort of the by hand, the by hand version of it right now. Um, six, go, so right. So that's setting up the shield, I want those. And then the NUMA control forces the memory to zero. And as we saw, that's not it's not perfect for some reason, uh, but that doesn't even exist anymore. Okay, it's not perfect, but it's, I guess it's okay. And again, why is oh, it's at yeah, it's at eighteen hundred now. So that's almost no, that's still still not as much memory as I would expect. Did I not reset this to away from two gigs? No, I've got the RAM size at 16 gigs. Hmm. Is it possible? It's just not using that much RAM. It is just not using that much RAM. Okay. Fair enough. That would explain it. <laughs> I guess it is only using four CPUs to do the build. But okay, this is nice. I'm pretty satisfied with that. Um, I found some bugs along the way. Uh, I'd like it to coexist with Docker. Uh, I'm not sure. Hello in chat. Not sure how to get Docker. Well, let's just see what happens if I restart Docker. Will it re, like, will it um, duplicate what's here in the CPU set? Uh, like, what's in the root node? Will it duplicate that? So let's see what happens if I restart Docker, or will Docker absolutely flip out because it's not doesn't have its thing? Oh, it does not have does not have the it did not rebuild it. I wonder why. Mm -hmm. Will it freak out? Yes, it will freak out. Interesting. Now I get to figure out how I broke Docker. Thank you, yes. I'm lucky to have that CPU and all that RAM. Um, but I need to get back to having everything build correctly. <laughs> Let's go look at what Docker installs. Because something set up or sets up that C group on boot every time. Well, this is the one interaction I'm going to be struggling with, I guess, for dealing with Docker uh, and the C groups. Because I don't know where they get set up. Uh -huh. Let's try the socket. Nope. Uh, let me go see if I can see a quick answer on the great Googles. Um, 
Docker, Docker, Docker. Uh, container test. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the problem. It's not working now. Secret parent. Yeah, interesting. So I'm not sure what Docker uses to create its C groups, um, but it definitely wants to have them since now I can't run my uh, instance, All right? Boom. Yes, yes, the timer is still going because that didn't get cleaned up correctly. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> I could, I can kind of cheat for the moment. I could do a, uh, um, <laughs> funny you should ask about the build. Uh, yeah, so when uh, I, I do my builds inside a Docker container, um, but, <laughs> but also <laughs> in the VM <laughs> is also running Docker. <laughs> but that's, that's because I'm trying, the benchmark I want to get is doing a build with a bunch of set comp um, with like, with, for example, Docker's default uh, set comp policy in place. Um, so yeah, if we, here, I'll go more entertainment. Um, here's QMU, right. So uh, here's my benchmarking junk. So if the benchmarking script basically says, please use Please use Docker in the VM. <laughs> um, and this is mostly just a duplicate of what I do for myself. Uh, so it's using an image, um, a focal image that I've got that I built there. I might have deleted it for space. But, um, anyway, Docker, whoops, Docker image plus. Yeah, so I've got focal base, which is just a um, time to use Podman on L zero. Maybe I've heard I've heard good things about Podman. I feel like I just keep recreating stuff that everyone else has already written, and eventually I get there and I feel much better that someone else wrote a much 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 fancier script than me. But at least by that time I know I at least know what the script is doing. Um, so that's sort of I tend to learn this stuff from like first principles up. Um, anyway, so yes, the, this has a Docker inside the VM, <laughs> so I can do it with and without. But uh, out here, actually, I'm thinking I can, um, I can cheat by adding, let's see, C group, let's see, group parent, was it system? No, wait, I have to do, do something silly, like slash system slash, why? Why though? Can't remember if that's true. Uh, here. Yes, okay, so that's a bit of a cheat. Um, I'll add this to my coexist with Docker, what? Adding to my to-do list. <laughs> What actually creates the Docker C group? I don't know where that happens. Um, I could do something really horrible. Hold on. Uh, Docker.io. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to be able to. Oh, CPU set, maybe. Ah, oh well. S trace, S trace on Docker. Oh, that'll be painful. I could, but I suspect I would want to go look at the source first. Uh, but there's gotta be, I assume it would be part of s like the system startup, but I just don't see, um, I don't I don't see anything. Like there's nothing in the service. It's just the, um, as far as I can see, it's just the Docker D itself. But it makes, I mean, it makes notes about, about the C groups. And then it's delegated. So the system does not reset the secret of Docker containers, right? Anyway, I'll answer that another time because that's mostly just a, a larger investigation. Um, 
Anyway, uh, so yeah, I'm relatively happy with this as far as getting it working. Uh, what does HTOP still show? Is it done? No. Can't be done. Nope, still going. All right. I'm going to move this somewhere where I can actually see it. There. Um, okay, well, so what was the other thing I we were going to do today was look at um, look at the sec comp uh, constant action bitmaps for the sole purpose of trying to improve the overhead of sec comp. Because at least in my earlier benchmarks, I was seeing like a 5 to 8% uh, slowdown just on a build workload. Um, I like build workloads because they're are a little syscall and memory and I.O. heavy. So usually if I'm breaking something in the kernel, I notice it real quickly um, on a build workload. Obviously, it's not the only workload that people care about, but um, this one was, uh, yeah, it was noticeable, which I found pretty surprising. Uh, however, uh, so let me, I can show, let me show where we are on, on this. So v5 was recently sent. Uh, let me go back through. Here is the URL for that. This is the v5 of bitmap filters. And the last one, sorry, the last patch is this, this nice way of sort of looking at the set comp filters, the results of a given process, right? You can see where, what it's, what it's doing. Um, we need to, we need to tweak this a little bit because, well, actually I don't remember if I got wired up. I need to go look. Um, because while a process has, is a thread group leader, um, the other threads in that process can potentially have different set comp filters. They're all a, you know, a subset of, or not subset, a, a fork of, of the parent, but um, uh, but this this view doesn't let us see the, th the threads, I think. So let me go look really quickly at base or if it got wired up. Um, I did wire it up. Cool, cool. Okay, so I'm looking at TG and uh, this is thread group ID and this is thread ID. So this will show up in the tasks subdirectory. Let me go look at that. Uh, that's my htop. It's a different htop. Uh, something else. All right, let's just go back through here. Let's not do that. Okay, so this one is, I believe, booted with the b5 that I built um, so secomp cache is what influenced the bitmap. Um, let me go see the exact names. So the idea was, um, ye, uh, it's called currently the data structure that's being used. Let me go, instead of reading it, so the data structure that's being used for this is action cache. Um, <laughs> so uh, when I did the first demo of this back in June, I attached these bitmaps to the task struct as opposed to the filter. Um, Jan Horn had uh, a good suggestion that this be attached to the filter because I mean, well, since tasks share filters, it seemed the sensible thing to do which made a lot of sense. Um, again, due to the weirdness of what I'm seeing in my benchmarks, I'm not sure if I'm just doing really poor uh, benchmarking or if uh, something is not great about attaching this to the filter somehow in, I don't know, memory pressure or decache misses or something like that. But um, let's see, catching up on chat again. Um, Yes, mutt and lore and mbox. Yeah, the for reading threads. It's it can be useful. My my version of that is really really limited. Um, my little reply script, uh, which basically goes and fetches the 
the M box and unzips it and and um, and runs mud on it, so I can I can see things uh, like for this thread. I can just say apply to that, and poof, there's the entire thread. Although it goes all the way back to zero uh, to the V1. But yeah, there's this is the main thread from that. Um, anyway, so the 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 caches are here, and to see that mapping is um, let's go back to here. So this is the VM. If I go in, if I look at like proc, well here. If we look at status to see set comp, we see nope. I've got nothing on this on this process. Um, not not a big deal. Um, if we look at, for example, let's see, uh, system D resolve D. Um, if we look at this, one that really really alarmed me, I think. Um, I'm not gonna read the gzip files. Oh, okay, well I'll save myself a step. Um, I was not expecting a double digit number here. Um, when I went to go look at some other things, um, when I started this in June, I was stunned to discover how many filters Systemd alone had attached to a couple of its uh, a couple of its services. Um, and in the threads back in June, you know, Leonard talked about how they got there, which is mostly an idea of them sort of stacking certain things logically on top of each other. Including support for, you know, filtering Compat uh, and X32 and all those other things that really ballooned the number of filters. But I thought this was completely, completely wild. My dropping frames. Let me see. Um, things seem okay here. Bitrate looks stable. Um, don't know. I'm gonna keep going. Um, anyway, so this was, uh, that was a lot of filters, so it was understandable. Um, but anyway, if I now look at, uh, let's see, this should have the cache. I'll just step through this. Um, we can see that if you look at x86.64, um, a lot of these are just straight allow. So those are the ones that are being passed immediately through the bitmap without ever running the filter at all. Um, the ones that are still marked filter though, those will get the full filter stack because there isn't a way to determine constant action. Um, and that's what that nice bit of debugging allowed for uh, externally. And what I wanted to see was, uh, this should show up in under task, whoops. Right, that's just one thing. Um, trying to think of something that might have more. Well, it doesn't really matter. Let's look at it anyway. Because if this works, um, yeah, it's there. So we can see it per thread view, per task view. And we see a bunch of ones in the 160 range, 170, 180 are all filtered. Um, let's see. Uh, so, yeah, so the. The idea is if you've if you've attached a sec comp filter to a process, it will run that filter uh, for every syscall, um, because until until this idea, there wasn't really a way to determine um, what what it needed to do. Um, so if you look at say. So what a filter would see is this information internally in the kernel. It would see the syscall number, the architecture that it was executing on. Uh, since you have you know the, these multi-arch systems like x86-64, which is also capable of running IA32 and is also capable of running x32. Um, so you need, if you're going to filter, you need to know what architecture you're running on too. And it included also the instruction pointer that happened at the time uh, and arguments into 
uh, into the syscall. And so a filter can filter on all of these things. Um, but one of the things I sort of reasoned about uh, back in June was like architecture and syscall number don't, you know, change and are visible external. Like I have a mapping if I've reached the second point I can say, oh, I already know what the syscall is. If I can just look this up in a bitmap, I can know I should just allow it. I don't even need to run the filter because every time I run the filter, I know it will be allowed. So I don't have to execute the filter every time. Um, and the, the issue was, I only know that's true if nothing in the filter accesses the instruction pointer or the arguments. In other words, a, it is a direct mapping. It always does the same thing. Um, and then I can create a bitmap on it and it'll just pass through. So filter just means run the filter. It doesn't mean disallow at all. Um, it just means be ever so slightly slower. Um, and the issue is you, the set count filtering isn't per syscall, it's per process. So all syscalls run the filter, the entire filter stack. So there may be all kinds of things that uh, you don't care about. So you just say, yeah, sure, run, run that. Um, if you look at some, you know, what was it, samples, set comp. Um, let's see some quick examples of what some of these filters look like in set comp. Um, Make one of those data structs per syscall, yes. And that's constructed on every on every entry. Um, that's part of the overhead, but it's relatively small overall. So here's some examples of what a filter looks like. I go fetch the syscall number. If it's you know sig return, then um, don't go anywhere. And you say return allow. If it's this one, return allow. If it's that one, return allow. If it's that one, return allow. Um, if it's this one, this one, or that one, then we check, you know, check the argument. What's the syscall argument on read and write? Well, if it's anything other than, uh, you know, argument uh, standard in file number, then kill. Otherwise, standard out, standard error. Like checking for what we can read, what we can write, etc. And then we say allow and this like the trap and killer here redundant uh, sorry not not redundant uh, they are different targets so trap we're going to jump two instructions to the trap we're going to jump jump one to allow and everything else that we didn't already allow gets killed so that's how it happens um, yeah so that's uh, sorry second data is what's visible to the filter as it runs and and action cache is attached to the struct seccomp itself, which is the kernel's internal representation of what's going on. Um, here, right, bottom of the page here. So what mode it's in, and how many filters it has, and the filter chain. Um, when I did this in June, I put I put the bitmaps here, uh, which is per uh, per thread per task, uh, but that's kind of a waste of space. So now they are in this action cache, which is part of filter. Do, 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 do. This is what an actual filter looks like internally as it's stored. Link to the prior filter, the BPF program itself, the notification, mutexes, wait queues, some other stuff for doing fancy things. And here's the uh, the cache. Uh, the action cache is here now. Um, again, playing with this, where it is, how it's located, is the part I'm curious about. Um, and if you look at where the cache gets used, check cache allow bitmap. Hold on. Check cache allow. Okay, so here we are at run filters. You can see the this is the sort of main the core logic for seccomp filter. We've reached here, we say, you know, we'll have a memory barrier and say, okay, do we not have our seccomp data yet? If not, please populate a local version on the stack. And now I've got our seccomp data. 
and then run the filters and we get a result out and we split up the data and the action from it and then with the action we just do whatever the result of the filter was. Um, so now when we do run filters, the first thing that happens on entry would be we grab the current filter, um, we freak out if it's not there, um, and then we check is this just allowed by the bitmap. So we're passing in that filter plus um, the seccomp data piece. And then that one goes through and says, uh, if we don't have compat built in, then we're native only. We don't need to look at the architecture at all. We know that the architecture is always going to be this one. And we look at that bitmap. And if this value is set in that bitmap, we return true. And these are for the compat case where we have a native and a compat. And we have to check for both. And if we have an arch that is not native or compat, we're going to freak out and return false. In other words, go, go filter. Um, and here again is just bounds checking, um, bounds checking this and looking it up. All right, so that's all the logic for it. And if we um, return to this, uh, that's what we see here is this called zero. The filter always returns allow, no matter what any of the arguments are. Therefore, there's no reason to run the filter uh, because it will always return allow. And if it returns anything other than allow, um, we should just run the filter, is, is basically what those bitmaps say. Um, so it's basically a fast, fast exit because slow exits we don't care about. Um, if it's a filter and says allow, okay, that's cool. But if it's a filter that says, you know, kill this process, we don't have to do that quickly. Um, anyway, I had some terrible, terrible hack for finding out, um, I wonder if it's in the history. NR. Ooh, it is. Hold on. Let me see if I still have this. Just awful. Uh, will this actually do what I want it to do? What process was 1726? I think it was system D resolve D. Yeah, it's up at the top here. I'm just looking at something with a boatload of, of filters attached because that's something that would benefit. Um, let me see if this hor horrible, horrible command line still works. I didn't like looking at raw syscall numbers, and there isn't a particularly clean way to get the names back out inside the kernel without doing tons of shenanigans. Um, I still might want to, but <laughs> this mess of scripting was, what's my favorite syscall number? I think it was a uh, process. Uh, process VM write V. <laughs> All right, so this is the mapping. Um, number, not name. Oh, uh, I guess it depends on architecture. 12. Ah, that's break. Um, so we can see read and write are allow, which is nice. Open is a little, is, you know, ever so slightly slower because it gets filtered. Um, MMAP gets filtered, MProtect gets filtered, but you see a lot of like IO control, a bunch of sort of common things are not being filtered at all and just go straight through. Um, fork, clone, yes. Um, yeah, as you can see here, filter, unclone, maker, create. Anyway, so it just looks like uh, you know, if you go look at Oh man, it's not Nazi. Uh, lib system D system resolve D. No, is it just going to be system D? System, yes, system D resolve D service. So all of this stuff here is what it's doing. So you can see restrict address families. That's going to be what what the socket filter looks like. You know, this is high level. They they have a you know, they're not doing, um, they have their own language here for describing what restrictions to they implement via a second filter. 
Um, but anyway, they've got a bunch of different stuff in here. And they even say limit the syscall architecture to native, but apparently they still build all of the um, they still build all of the uh, compat architectures into it as well. But I think that was a limitation of libseccomp itself. Um, yeah, it would be like list of syscalls and the numbers. Seems like it would be nice. Um, seems like we could generate that. I mean, we have the names of what they're called, uh, but no, instead they're buried in weird places. Uh, let's see, like, oops, no, sorry, user include x86 uh, asm uni standard 64. There you go. There they all are. And that's what my terrible command line was trying to extract and renumber from, from there. But it really would be nice if I could just have that here. Um, that said, I'm not, I'm not super, I don't know. This should be human readable as opposed to machine readable, I think. Um, so maybe having it say something like, you know, uh, if this instead read as x86, 64, you know, zero read allow, something like that. Then you could do both, human and readable, or human and machine readable. That'd be nice. Um, anyway, while we've been messing around in here, this has been running, and wow, is it slow. That's stunning. Okay. Um, this normally runs in five minutes, so it looks like my... CPU pinning has done something extremely terrible. Well, that's very exciting. Wow. I wonder if there's a lot of overhead in KVM outside of the guest CPUs. Um, I'll have to take a look at what libvertd is doing. Wow, that is really slow. On the other hand, it's really consistent. It's off by one second, well, by five, a half of a second difference between them across an eight minute run. Well, as long as it's stable, that would be nice because my main problem has been the huge standard deviation. But boy, is it slow. Not sure. That's certainly an effect, an effect from what I was doing to it. Um, Anyway, back to this, uh, the, the bitmaps code, which I know improves things. The question is, uh, should it be attached to task struct or the filter? It makes sense for space savings for it to be attached to the filter. Um, but if there's actually a, um, a performance difference, it might need to be attached to the task struct, um, which I don't think would be too hard. Because at the very least, we could also just copy it out of uh, out of the filter into the task struct. Um, so some, I think I made some changes. Oh, hold on. D, no, okay. Cache to bug. Yeah. So I made some changes in here. Based this isn't this isn't the pure v5. Um, I'm gonna rename it. Uh, we'll check out a new version so I can have a clean version to compare. Uh, for next setcomp, whoosh. doing this again. I think it was already here. Um, that's grabbing the thread and um, it kind of makes a weird mess of the sign off buys because uh, I'm the, <laughs> if you look at, if you look at the, th here, I'll just, um, hold on, let me just get AM this for a second. 
if you look at the sign off files, it gets kind of weird. Uh, especially for stuff like. So here, this is from my June one, but uh, he'd updated it to be uh, to show benchmarks using the current implementation. Um, so I was the author, so I'd send it off by, but of course he sent it back to me, so he has a signed off by, and then I have a signed off by, which is odd. So uh, I, I tried to rearrange that in my, in my final version, but I made some other changes as well. Let's see, I can show. <laughs> yep, that's, that's turned out to be quite a joint venture. Um, work tree. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay. Right, work tree add. Oh, I don't have to do that. Do, I'm going to do a git diff just from here to develop account bit maps v5. Yes, that will show me what I did. Uh, .NET development, no, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> it's all C and Python for me. Um, so here's some changes I made is I didn't, I didn't want the extra K config hanging around because this is yet more signaling a architecture has to do to turn on the caching and I just want it to work or not. Um, I, I don't want to keep adding more things. Um, I wanted, uh, for example, uh, just second like arch native to be sufficient for turning this on. Um, so apparently that's the only thing I changed uh, in here. There's an argument to be made that what he had already was probably more correct, um, but my sense of how we do per architecture feature enablement tells me that adding a sort of unneeded gating K config ends up confusing things later. I could be wrong, but we'll see. Um, I think I'm going to go back to this and see. Oh, and then as I was talking, it had a huge jump in time, but of course I had logged in to do other things while that happened. So let's stop here for a second. Stop, stop, stop. And just do simple, simple benchmarks. Um, let's see. So if I go into, sorry, to show this commit where it came from, the self-test commit that I was talking about that I'd written was just doing this as benchmark in a really tight loop. The idea of being just measuring uh, the overhead as much as possible. Um, so you could see, um, like if I benchmark a whole bunch of syscalls, you know, doing get pid, which is probably one of the uh, fastest syscalls because it just copies an information out of the task struct and turns around. Um, on this one, we see that the overhead, the native, just doing a native call was 646 nanoseconds on average. And if we add one filter, uh, which allows for a bitmap that would always allow, it goes up to 675. Um, and so we can sort of see as we go what the estimated overhead for various things are. So if we have uh, one filter, but it allows for bit mapping, we see that it has an overhead of 29 nanoseconds. And if we have two filters, but they're still allowing for bitmap, there's no change in the overhead because it goes through the bitmap and it doesn't actually execute the filters. So at 29 nanoseconds. Um, but then we add another filter that you know checks an argument or something. Suddenly the entire filter stack uh, stops being uh, going through the bitmap and it actually has to execute the entire filter stack. So now the it jumps to 86 nanoseconds for three full filter executions, very small filters, obviously. Um, and we had a fourth and we jumped to you know, 106. So we can sort of examine the entry overhead as being 29 uh, nanoseconds. And then we can see roughly the per filter overhead by looking at the difference between the last two filters, or we can look at the per filter overhead by counting 
all four filters and dividing by four, and that's pretty close. Um, and then we sort of list out the expectations, right? The native time should be less than one bitmap filter, right? Because there is overhead in having suckcomp manage the, sys the syscall at all. And so, yes, we see that. Uh, native should be less than one full filter, which it really is. And then we say, okay, per filter, you know, the two per filters should be about the same, these two numbers that I talked about earlier. And one bitmap filter should be about the same speed as two bitmaps because there isn't such a thing as two bitmaps. It's two filters, both bitmappable. Um, so yeah, those are equal. And entry speed should be, like the entry overhead should be comparable to checking the bitmap, which it still is. And so running all of that together, we get the native call, the entry overhead, per filter, we get four filters, we should be able to get close to what we calculated. And this, like having these expectations work out means that we had enough samples to do that, that benchmark. Uh, but anyway, those are in tools, testing, self-test, seccomp. Where I will just toss the benchmark at the machine, or the VM, I should say. So here we are, um, set comp, benchmark, and off it goes trying to, oh, I don't have BPF jitting enabled. I bet that's why it's super slow, because <laughs> I was under Docker. Why do they not exist at all, though? Uh, I don't have, so this spat out over here, um, JIT, uh, these proxies, the, the, since seccomp's filters are BPF, the BPF core can either run a VM, like a little, little virtual machine to actually emulate the state, or it can, um, not sort of the standard way, or it can uh, JIT it into native, native code for the architecture. Um, and yeah. Uh, so when I'm looking at this, we can see what native speed, yeah, native 762. And we can see the bitmap overhead for one filter and it's small um, and the same for two of them. And then it jumps when we um, kick in a complex filter that the bitmapping uh, can no longer declare is going to always return allow. Um, in chat, uh, you want to learn the kernel. Uh, do you think you should start from an older version, or latest version? Uh, I think you should start from the latest version. Uh, so much stuff changes at such, such a speed. Um, probably your best bet is to start with now and, and um, go from there. Because the old kernel looks almost nothing like the current one. Um, all right, so the per filter calculation was a little off. That probably just means we need more, more samples. Um, but overall, this looks about right for expectations. You know, the bitmaps are the same. The entry is about the same as a bitmap. Um, so speed-wise, these match the expectations I've got. Um, let's go look at configs for. BPF stuff. Uh, do 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 do. All right, jet. BPF jet is arch want default. BPF jet. Does that mean it'd be no no? The always on is off. Okay, so one. Yes, please enable BPF jet. That is. Makes things much, much faster. Um, I am good with that. And now, oh, what is, um, hold on, I'm super curious. Does getconf notice, um, if it's in, yeah, in a C group, it does not. Cool. Does LSCPU know? 
reference. It does not. It's getting that information from a different place. So since I'm you know down four CPUs because I've got them isolated to the KVM instance, this thing still thinks it should build its 72 CPUs or 72 threads. But let's do this. And when that shuts down, whoop, everyone goes back to the root set. And I can uh, re uh, wait a second. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I want I want my modified tree, not this one. Sorry, my timer is still going because I haven't found a way to kill it correctly. Okay, this one is what I want to build uh, with that config so that I can have the BPF JIT because wow, that was slow. But three minutes slow versus like three minute overhead is not not because of that missing. And now HTOP is happy. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to spend a little bit more time playing with it, but I mean, that appears to be the basic idea for, for getting the C groups working. But I don't know if you remember seeing how many threads there were for that QMU instance. It was uh, really large. So it makes me think I need a bunch Makes me think I need threads, additional threads in that uh, CPU set for QMU to do other things, non non guest activities. I'm not sure. Like for example, I have no idea how Vert IO is implemented. Um, you know, on that side, but it was kind of a lot of uh, of threads for a four virtual CPUs. Hmm. I think those are fixed later. Anyway, uh, there's that, and we'll rerun kernel. Oh, 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 did Docker come back? What? Huh. Fascinating. Well, I don't know what creates Docker's um, CPU set. Entry. Huh. Very interesting. Uh, what happens if I do my CG delete again? We're just going to pretend as I fight over C groups. Oops. Wee. All right. So yeah, looking at this again. Um, can you and then ls of rock this. Task, right? There's kind of a lot of tasks. If those are CPUs. What are the rest? I'd like to know. Anyway, uh, let's go back. No, I'm not doing that. Stop it. All right, here we are again. Let's look at the bench benchmark. And yes, so now it says the JIT is enabled, hardening is not. Um, right, so before the overhead on a filter, like it's pretty small, but the JIT should make a difference. Per filter overhead uh, is around 90 nanoseconds on that benchmark. Um, I'll be curious to see what uh, what this looks like with the JIT enabled. Again, this is not a great benchmark, just because I'm doing funky things with CPU sets and who knows what's going on. All right, so 15. 
Oh, sorry, that's that's calibrating for 15 seconds worth of syscalls as it slowly gets slower. Um, the next one is what we want, which will take us. Yeah, so three is eight twenty nine seven fifty. That is about eighty nanoseconds divided by three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. A little unstable, but one of them was, um, oh no, yeah, so uh, entry per filter overhead 16 nanoseconds instead of 90. All right, so the, the, the BPF JIT makes a huge difference uh, on that. Uh, so I wonder uh, if, we'll just start this up again and see if it made a difference. I can't believe it would be three minutes difference. That's, uh, that's intense. Anyway, I'm gonna start that up just for myself in the future because I think I'm running out of time before I'm going to eat my arm for lunch. So I'd say my main open question for doing the, the CPU set, let's go back to that. For doing the CPU set stuff is to figure out how to get a C set to behave when the Docker um, CPU set is already there. And let's do a little bit of investigation here. Um, oh yeah, I see dev CPU sets. Uh -huh. Interesting. It was not. Yeah, I think that's I think that's out of date because I'm pretty sure this is just using the C groups standard stuff. But anyway, let's look at where it comes from. Do I have any? Yes. Do I have any sources listed? Yes, I do. Okay, so no package. Ah. Where did CSET come from? CPU set. Set to support version. Okay, 1.6. Where are we on releases for this project? Do -do -do -do. Last commit, August of 2019. Hmm. That does not fill me with joy. Maybe it's done. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, Ender News, yeah, 1.6 is the latest, so nothing has really changed. Um, fixes for, oh, very loud. Fixes for uh, Python stuff. Yeah. Um, so two, three, I do have young coworkers. <laughs> Allowed coworkers. Well, uh, yeah. So I don't. I'd rather not reinvent uh, CSET for moving, like for doing the CPU isolation to get those things out of the root node. That would kind of not be fun. Um, so maybe it just needs a fork and some additional love. There's a pull request. What for? Misplaced parentheses, more coworkers. Um, anyway, let's check on let's check on the benchmark, shall we? 
still going. It doesn't even finish the first one. But we can get back to it later. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's uh, that's about what I wanted to get into. Um, I mean, if we if I really want to do a little bit more, is figuring out uh, where where Docker is setting up its stuff. But I think that's entirely inside Go. Um, teaching C set about other um, like removing CPUs from other sets and being able to specify um, what they should be named. Like, uh, so C, C set shield, I can't spell shield. And so I can specify the names of the system and user CPU set, but it seems like it gets um, pretty upset about the uh, having any other groups in there. Uh, and I think adding a feature to have it say, pull any, any CPUs out of, like anything you're pulling out of the root uh, CPU set, pull out of the others, uh, these other ones, or at least uh, name the ones that you're allowed to pull them out of, something like that. I think that could work nicely. Um, let's see. How is working at Canonical? Very smart people. Um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, they're, um, yeah, Google made me an offer I couldn't refuse, is sort of how I look at it. And, um, Canonical is a, a great deal of fun. And I like being able to help bring, I don't know, Debian and Ubuntu's build, uh, like build hardening up into, you know, the modern era 10 years ago. Um, but it definitely underscored that there was a lot of work to do in the kernel. So that's where I ended up next. <laughs> um, it's a good place. Let's see. Um, yeah, so uh, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to wrap up. This is about where I am. Uh, I think just doing some more work on CSET or seeing if there's something more modern that does this work, but I don't think anything else does the shielding that I want. Um, actually removing CPUs so they can be dedicated is really what I'm after. And since um, memory controls can be done also with the C groups, with the CPU set C group, it would be nice to teach CSET shield about that as well, since that's like, I wouldn't have to do the other, the other thing. Um, yeah, the CPU boot isolation arguments. So I looked at that and that was weird. Well, let me get back to that. That one, do, 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 where is that tab? Almost there, I think, nope. I have too many tabs, here we go. All right, so if you boot with ISOL CPUs equal, um, they're just um, gone, like they're not part of it. So you can use task set to bind them. Uh, but my understanding is then I can't bring them back into the main. Like if I, you know, I stop KVM, because I'm done testing that build and then I want to build again, something changed, um, I'd be down four CPUs. Um, so that, that wasn't, wasn't great. Um, oh yeah, did not launch K threads. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it would work if I had like dedicated VMs or something that I wanted to do that, or, you know, I was trying to uh, protect VMs from, you know, hyper-threading attacks and, and other stuff like that. Um, but in my use case here is just, I want to get, stuff bound on the same set of resources that aren't, that are as uh, unconstrained as possible, like memory is on the same NUMA node as the CPU sockets, um, etc. Just so I can have reliable benchmarking uh, and benchmarking that isn't interfered, like I, it won't uh, be interfered by me trying to do a build. Um, while that benchmarking is going on. I think that'd be nice. I mean, I think there's always going to be interference, but I wanted um, I wanted to see if I could isolate it. Um, it's, it's not big enough. Well, no, it's too big. It interferes with itself. <laughs> uh, if I had like two smaller machines, this would be straightforward, but it's a little bit harder to deal with. It's nice to have it all in one place. Um, 
Yeah, so I'm, I don't know if there's any, I'm just gonna go look and see if there's any forks. There are 14 forks of CPU set. I could go take a look and see if anyone has, um, has any patches against them doing other things. Be curious. It has a bunch of open issues. Oh yeah, there it is. Controlling allocated memory. <laughs> And fail to create shield. Hint, do other CPU sets exist? Yeah, all the same stuff I see is also in the like, open issues. But it looks like they haven't had, um, haven't had any time to work on it, which is fine. Here's what I was looking at. Just looking at the issues on the CPU set. It'd be nice. Um... Anyway, uh, yeah, so I think I'm 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 gonna wrap up. Uh, I'm all done with that. I've explored the C groups and take a look at V5 quickly of the bitmap, uh, second bitmap stuff. Um, I want to finish getting benchmarks so I can truly um, I can reliably compare what it looks like to do. Uh, so the the three pieces I wanted were uh, a build, so like a, a a kernel build benchmark stock. So like, you know, a 5.9 released kernel. Um, that same build, but inside of Docker, which means it has both the VFS layer and the seccomp layer. And then another build with that again, but with the bitmaps in place. Um, and that should get me three numbers. And the last one should be smaller than the Docker one and only slightly slower than the sort of bare metal one. Um, and then I can know that this has actually had a measurable impact in sort of real world workflows uh, or workloads, I should say. Because right now, just seeing how long get pid takes is a nice first step, but doesn't really, doesn't get us anything real. Um, anyway, um, so that's it. Um, thank you all for spending some time listening to me yammer and thank you for your help on <laughs> typos and finding commands and finding um, a Python future module, which I don't know why it wasn't installed, but so be it. Um, anyway. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, that was a cool exploration. And um, I expect to be back next week too. So cool. Uh, until next time, thank you. Take care. Um, oh, cool. Pick of how to change CPU numbering. Well, now I have to figure this out. Hold on a second. You almost got me. Almost gone. Let's go look. Loading, loading, loading. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. All right, the imager here. Count CPU. Yes, I swear that was somewhere. Um, this is. There's the image from Joey. So that's in the setup. So display options. Why couldn't I see it? HTOP setup? No, setup. Setup two. Why? Is it because my screen is too little? Sort up. Control A. Go to the setup screen. Yes, which means it's probably too small for my screen. Hold on, let's see what happens if I do horrible things in this HTOP screen. What will OBS do? Ooh, goodbye, can't see my face. Okay, I'll just crouch. S, nothing. Uh, display options, here we go. Ah! Done.
and then we'll bring this back up to there. Yay, it matches CPU set. Okay, another success. Thank you so much. <laughs> that was perfect. All right, now for real, goodbye. Thank you so much. Uh, see you later.